She said, well, what do you want? And I said, well, we want twins. And she threw her pencil on the table and said, look, you, you've talked to me about you're 42 years old, <laughs> you don't have kids, and all these countries, they take time, and um, you know, you've just added time to your process because we just don't do uh, twins. It's, it's very rare, and she's, she had done two sets of twins in over 20 years of business because it's hard to place sibling groups and even harder to place twins. I'm Doug Turner, and this is my God story. Morgan and I just celebrated our 33rd anniversary this year, and the funny thing about that is the first 19 years we had no children, and then our lives were radically changed when at the age of 42 we decided we would uh, adopt children internationally. We had had a couple opportunities, random opportunities, where friends had called us out of the blue and, and said, hey, would you be interested in adopting? The first time we went through the process, we had a lot of neat things that happened that set us up to where we thought we would be able to do that. But at the end of the day, um, the birth mom chose someone else. And then just as random as that one, the second one occurred the same way. So there was a little bit of, of heartache and, and um, disappointment. And, and so I went for a run one day and, and Margot had some portfolios that she was grading and, and looking at and, and that's just kind of busy work and so she had the TV on more or less as background noise when I walked out. I didn't really think she was watching it and when I came in she, she was weeping and she had a towel in her lap, not just a hanky but a towel and I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and she just said, you know, I just watched a show about girls being sold into sex, sex, sex slavery in India. And she said, we got to do something. And i like, do what? You know, and, and we, had, we had just sold a big house, moved into this little bitty duplex, and we're kind of clearing the deck for God to do something different. So I'm like, we really, you know, a couple months ago would have been nice because we had room, and you know, what are you saying? And well, let's, I don't have enough to know. Let's just pursue and take the next step and see if God opens the door. So we had collected a bunch of information about um, adoption agencies and I reached out to one that had a local representative in Little Rock and, and Kimberly agreed to meet with us. She tells her story and we kind of tell our story and she's like, you know, and when semester's over and the start of the new year, if you guys really feel like this is what you think you need to continue to pursue, I'll come over and I'll, I'll meet you down in Arkadelphia and we'll make this official and get, get started. And so sure enough, uh, after the new year, we just really had a real peace about let's just, you know, say yes, you know, be open. Um, and, and be willing and to see what God does. And so Kimberly came to our house and, and I said, well, we want twins. And she threw her pencil on the table and said, look, you, you've talked to me about you're 42 years old, <laughs> you don't have kids. And all these countries, they take time and um, you know, you've just added time to your process because we just don't do um, twins. It's, it's very rare and she's, she had done two sets of twins in over 20 years of business because it's hard to place sibling groups and even harder to place twins. And so she's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, just humor me, put us down. And if by May or June, you don't have, uh, if there's not any movement in that direction, then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll listen to God and we'll, we'll, we'll change. And she said, okay. So a couple weeks go by and she calls and said, funny thing. A birth mom walked into our agency there in Guatemala City and she's carrying twins and I need to know if you'll take them. I said, yes. And she says, well, I have to hear it from Margo. So I said, she'll be home this afternoon. She called and Margo called. And I was in the other room and I heard Margo say, yes, but if they're two boys, we're gonna start the process the next day for a girl. So the journey began. We end up going there on Thanksgiving day and uh, the kids were born in uh, July 9. And we show up on Thanksgiving Day and we get there, there's lots of birth parents around to get on the plane and, uh, I mean, adoptive parents. Well, we didn't realize that you could visit your kids during the process. We just didn't know that. So we land, we get there, and we get to the hotel and, and, and the, the kids were there early. We, we thought they were going to be there at 3.30, but they were, the, the uh, foster mom had them there early. And so uh, after going through some stuff with the hotel, we finally get our room and we get our packet in the moment of truth and we open the packet and all the information that has been translated from English into Spanish that would make it official documents for, for their government were incorrect. They had birth dates wrong, uh, employment wrong, school wrong. It just, it just was a mess. So somewhere during the translation it got lost and Margaret said, what are we going to do? And I said, nothing. 
We're just going to let God take care of this. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to let God take care of it. So we had to stay around Marriott for nine and a half days. And the last day there, we thought, let's venture out. And we went to a local outdoor mall and Margot approached a, a, a professional looking couple that was window shopping and she was going to ask them about going to eat. And I was a little nervous and we had a, a student from Washtenaw that was a native Spanish speaker and we just needed all hands on deck. And, and so Margot goes over and asks and we kind of get out of the way and, and he says there's a great American Italian place two blocks away. You'd love it. you got to have the ravioli. It's a great place. So sure enough, we go there and the food's great, the ambience was great, and uh, we had a good time and, and made it back to the Marriott. The next day we show up to the U.S. Embassy and we go into a room and it's, it's crowded with people trying to get visas and um, you know, working out all kinds of immigration issues that they're having. And, and then there was us, an, the, an, an adoptive parent who was trying to get the paperwork to finalize being able to bring Caleb and Grace home to be our, our children. And, um, and here we are with incorrect paperwork. And after a bit, we heard Turner family door eight, and we opened the door, and it's the gentleman that gave Margot directions to the American Italian restaurant. He goes, Turner family, how was the, how was the restaurant last night? Tell me you had the ravioli. And, and so as he's talking and talking to Margot, and he's really, when we're talking to her, I've handed him the paper by now, and he's got the official U.S. stamp that has the seal on it, and it's one of those stamps that repeats, and he turns the page, boom, ch -ch boom, ch -ch and he's talking to Margo, and the whole time he's doing that, he's not looking at the paperwork one bit, and, um, and so, you know, puts the paperwork back in the envelope, says, you know, take, keeps his copy, and says, hey, God bless, I hope you have a great trip home, what a beautiful family, walk out the door, and Margo says, what just happened, and I said, God just happened.